Chapter 1 God's Wisdom and Power in the Cross of Christ 1 1 9 Introduction The Believer's Standing in Grace 1 10 17 Not Thinking Like God Divisions in the Body Due to Human Wisdom 1 18 25 Human Wisdom Contrasted with God's Wisdom 1 26 31 Corinthian Believers Not of the Wise, Christ is Our Wisdom. Who are the theirs in? 1 2 what is the same thing and how can we all speak the same thing? 110. What is the power of God? 118. What are the foolish, weak, and the base things in? 127. 28. What are eight ways God has made foolish the wisdom of this world? 1 1 3 Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes our brother, Two unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours, three grace be unto you, and peace, from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. It was the will of God to call Paul and make him the apostle of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Sosthenes, the former chief ruler of the synagogue that is now a brother in Christ, probably took the dictation of this letter from Paul who received the revelation from Christ. Paul founded the church at Corinth, a major city on an isthmus between two seaports in Acts 18 verses 1 to 18. Paul was called and commissioned by Christ to be his apostle as recorded in Acts 9 verses 1 to 16, 22 colon 7 dash 10, 26 colon 14 dash 18, and 1 Tim. 1 15, 16. Paul salutes the Corinthians saying they are sanctified along with those who have also been sanctified by calling upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. The Church of God is made up of both Peter's group and Paul's group. Paul's group is sanctified, set apart for service, in Christ Jesus, and called, invited, to be saints among others who are sanctified, Peter's group. The Corinthians standing as saints is perfect, but their state or conduct, walk, they are. Babes. Like new believers, Paul writes to the saints that in every place call upon Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs, Peter's group, and ours. He is not only our Lord, he is their Lord also. F. 2 colon 19 22, 3 15. The theirs is the believing remnant, Peter's group, the Israel of God, Gal. 6 16. Peter's group was in Christ, but not in the body of Christ. In Romans Paul said, At this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace, the election hath obtained it, the righteousness of Christ, and the rest were blinded, Rom. 11 7 Peter's group was already sanctified in the previous dispensation by faith and the body of Christ will have an inheritance among them. An inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me, Acts 26 verse 18. There were followers of Peter, Cephas, in the assembly at Corinth, 1 12, 3 22. Previously Paul had been allowed into Peter's group, Acts 9 verse 28. Peter's group that preached the gospel of the kingdom of God on earth was interrupted and placed on hold in Acts 15 verses 6 to 29, Gal. 2 colon 7 9. Today God is saving Jews and Gentiles who believe what his son did into the body of Christ by Paul's my gospel, justification by faith, Rom. 5 colon 1. 1 colon 4 dash 9 I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, 5 that in everything ye are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge, 6 even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, 7 so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, 8 who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. 9 God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul does not thank God for their conduct like he does the Thessalonians, 1 Thess. 1 colon 3, but for the grace God has given them by Jesus Christ. Graciously God gave them spiritual gifts as a testimony of Christ in them to the Jews in the synagogue next door, Acts 18 verse 7. During Acts, the Corinthians were enriched by him in sign gifts, uttering prophecy, speaking in tongues, other languages such as Hebrew, and having supernatural knowledge of what Christ had revealed to Paul before he had the complete revelation of the mystery. 
These gifts were evidence of their salvation during Acts and confirmed to the Jews and others that they had received the Holy Ghost and that God was working in and through them so the Jews would believe and be saved. The church members at Corinth were wonderfully blessed with more sign gifts than any other of the churches Paul had founded. The Lord Jesus himself will confirm us unto the end that ye, the corporate body of Christ, may be blameless because of the Son's imputed righteousness in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful and we have been called by the gospel unto the fellowship of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, F. 3-9, to, to share in the celebration of him taking control of his purchased possessions, heaven and earth. His spirit and doctrine will continue to work in the saved so that Christ may present them blameless and without blemish in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, the JSOC. Paul told the Philippians that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, philosophy. 1.10 While Satan is preparing the world for Antichrist, the Lord Jesus Christ is faithfully preparing believers to be blameless and have something of value at the judgment seat of Christ, JSOC, as we continue into eternity, F. 527. After the JSOC Christ will present us to the Father, 1 Thess. 313, God is faithful to confirm us until the day, JSOC. The body of Christ is a seal purchased by his blood, possession that will be redeemed, delivered, or rescued at the pre-tribulation rapture, 614. His spirit in us is the down payment or guarantee that we will be raptured, F. 113, 14. What power God will display when we are caught up, 1 Thess. 417, to meet him in the air. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4 verse 3. But the day of our Lord Jesus Christ is not the same as the rapture. The Lord Jesus will take possession of the second heaven in the middle of the tribulation. The Lamb is the one that is worthy to open the scroll, Revelation 5 verse 2, and send Michael and his angels to cast out Satan and his angels, Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9. This is when the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly, Rom. 1620, and we take up our positions in heaven. After Satan is cast down to earth, he knows he only has a short time left, 1260 days, 42 months, or three and a half years. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Revelation 12 verse 12 When the short time is up, Jesus Christ will come to take possession of the earth and to rule from Jerusalem. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Revelation 19 verse 11 1 colon 10 17 Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. 11 For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. 12 Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I have Apollos, and I have Cephas, and I have Christ. 13. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? 14. I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius. 15. Lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. 16. And I baptized also the household of Stephanas. Besides, I know not whether I baptized any other. 17 For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Verse 110 is the key verse. Paul implores them by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority vested in Apostle Paul, and gets into the main problem at Corinth, division, because they are not following Paul to follow the risen Lord Jesus Christ. 
The solution of the whole letter is to be perfectly united behind our apostle and of the same mind, the mind of Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625, when we all say what Jesus Christ said to us through Paul, then we speak the same thing. They needed to take their eyes off men and onto Christ and what he has accomplished by the cross. What is the same thing? That by the cross Christ saved another group of people, the body of Christ, to have eternal life in heaven. Paul uses the word same three times to emphasize the goal that we all speak the same thing, think the same, and judge the same. Paul has reminded them of who they are in Christ, saints, then he launches into a discussion of their sins, dealing first with the matter of division in the church, 3 colon 3, 11 18, 12 25. He clearly states the correct goal, to be perfectly joined together making the decisions Christ would make. The unity in F. 4 colon 1 dash 6, 16. In the kingdom, God will turn to the Hebrew believers to a pure language Zeph. 3 colon 9. Babel will be reversed and all will speak Hebrew. The Hebrew priests will speak the same thing about what the Lord has done to the Gentile. Nations and Prophecy in Hebrew, X. 19 colon 5, 6, Isaiah 61 verse 6, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, Rev 1 colon 6, 5 10. The body of Christ is a team that should all follow the doctrine Christ gave to Paul in his 13 letters. Charity is how heaven will operate for all eternity. Paul said he had heard from the house of Chloe, a respected family, that they were contending with one another and dividing into cliques. Paul takes responsibility for his assessment of the problem at Corinth. Now I say to you that everyone claims to be followers of men, they were divided into factions or denominations. Satan wants to cause division in the body of Christ, for us to exalt men's personalities and even Christ's earthly ministry in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John over Christ's heavenly ministry, 1 Cor. 1 12. Satan wants there to be cliques, factions, and denomination in the church, but God wants us to have unity, F. For colon 1 6, Satan knows the strategy of divide and conquer. The problem was that they were not following Paul to follow the risen Lord Jesus Christ. They are not to follow men based on their character, personalities, good looks, popularity, esteem among men, religious affiliation, or eloquence. Everyone is to exalt the risen Lord that Paul preached. The Corinthians glorified men. They are not to follow Paul the person, nor Apollos, or Cephas, Aramaic for Peter. Paul asks, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in my name? The answer is no, no, no. However, Apostle Paul should not be demeaned and lumped together with other ministers. He is our Christ-appointed apostle, and neither should he be deified, because Jesus Christ, the Son of God alone, accomplished the cross that saved two groups of souls. Paul thanks God that he barely water baptized anyone except Crispus, Acts 18 verse 8, Gaius, and also the household of Stephanas at Corinth. Paul does not want someone to say that he baptized anyone in his own name. It is Christ alone who is to be glorified. Paul cannot remember who else he may have baptized. He was not keeping track. Apostle Paul clearly states that Christ did not send him to water baptize, but to preach the gospel, Acts 26 verses 16 to 18. Water baptism takes away or detracts from Christ's accomplishment on Calvary. Water baptism was part of a required ceremonial cleansing of priests in another dispensation, Exodus 30 verse 21. What Christ did on the cross was enough and sufficient. We do not need to add any of our own works to his work of salvation. Paul describes our spiritual baptism in 1213. Paul did not. Preach with the wisdom of words, if eloquence mattered then the cross of Christ should be made of none effect and not have the power to translate us out of Adam and into Christ. 1 colon 18-31 For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. 19 For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. 20 Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? 
Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? 21 For after that in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. 22 For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. 23 But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. 24 But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. 25 Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The cross of Christ and his resurrection is the centerpiece of the Bible and the power of God. It is the preaching of the message of the cross that has the power to save. Jesus Christ took our place on the cross and paid the penalty for our sins so that we might receive his righteousness. 2 Cor. 521 The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are called by preaching and saved, both Jews and Greeks, Gentiles, we can have eternal life in the body of Christ by the power of God. Gal. 328 Paul was not ashamed to preach the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth. Rom. 116. Because it works. Faith in what Christ has done has the power to translate the believer out of Adam, bondage to sin and Satan and eternal death, and into Christ, freedom from the penalty and power of sin and eternal life. Colossians 1 verse 13. Somehow God miraculously translates us out of Adam and into Christ when we hear and believe the gospel of Christ. Paul preached Christ crucified wherever he went and so should we. It is written that God will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and those who think they are prudent will not be known. Paul quotes ISA 29 colon 14, 15, and later ISA 33 colon 18, God made foolish the wisdom of this world because no one could save themselves, the Son of God had to do it. The cross of Christ made the wisdom of this world foolish and shut the mouth of the wise, the scribes, and the disputer of this world. God's magnanimous act of the cross dwarfs everything else. Men's wisdom does not compare with God's wisdom. The Gentile world in all their wisdom did not know God, so it pleased God to use preaching to save them that believe. The Jews want to see a sign, John 4 verse 48, and the Greeks are looking for some great human wisdom, but God is using preaching to save souls. The preaching of his word has the power to save the soul of the hearer, Rom. 1017. The human wisdom in Athens and in the world was an obstacle to God's truth. The foolishness of God, the preaching of the cross, is wiser than men. God is not foolish. The supposed weakness of God, coming to earth and dying in a human body, is stronger than men. Christ allowed his crucifixion, Matt. 26 colon 53, man exalting divisions are wrong because the cross was completely God's wisdom and Christ's work which no man had any part in. How did God destroy the wisdom of the wise? Here are eight ways. 1. Christ came as a babe in a manger, and not the way the world would expect a king to be born, Luke 1 verses 51 and 52. 2. He was not of the priestly tribe of Levi, but of Judah, since he was a king and he did not mix with the religious men. 3. He called simple common people to be his followers, such as fishermen. 4. The resurrection of Jesus Christ surprised those who thought they could keep him dead, but up from the grave he arose. 5. Paul explained that his cross was the means by which God would declare a believer saved and impute his son's righteousness. By one cross Christ saved two groups, one to live in heaven and the other on earth. 6. God uses preaching as a means of salvation, the wise would not have thought of that. 7. God took the cross that symbolized disgrace, brutality, shame, condemnation, and made it symbolize salvation, forgiveness, love, redemption, and blessing. 8. God did not use signs other than the one sign Christ gave of the prophet Jonah. Signs have no power to save, they only confirm God's words, and God did not use man's wisdom, but God's wisdom and power to translate believers out of Adam and into Christ, from Pastor Tom Brescia on Father's Day in 2017. God's wisdom to save mankind by his son's work on Calvary has made foolish the wisdom of this world, Satan's or man's. 
Paul is denouncing human wisdom in Corinth, only 40 miles from Athens where human wisdom was elevated in men such as the philosophers Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and the Stoics, through meditation, religiously fasting, and exercising they try to get in touch with their own God, and Epicureans, who believe there is no God, so eat, drink, and be merry before you die. People or scientists who think they are noble and know everything will often not realize their sinfulness nor their need for a savior. God spoke to Jews with signs, PSA, 74 colon 9, and the Greeks had their philosophers like Plato. God made a covenant of sight with Israel Exodus 34 verse 10. The 10 plagues of Egypt showed that God was greater than the gods of Egypt. Because of the law contract, God would chastise Israel, Leviticus 26, with signs like no rain, famine, enemies, etc. But in this dispensation of grace, we walk by faith in his word, 2 Cor. 5 colon 7, God does not chastise us with weather and enemies, but we have an enemy, 1 Thess. 2 18, and we live in this present evil world, Gal. 1 colon 4. Paul contrasts the signs the Jews look for and the wisdom the Greeks seek after with the cross that he preaches. The preaching of the cross is foolish to the Greeks. Christ crucified is a stumbling block for the Jews. The Jews stumbled at the cross, failed to recognize their Messiah, and crucified him, John 1 verse 11, Rom 9 32, 33, 11 11, 1 Peter 2 verse 8. But, the cross demonstrates God's wisdom in solving the sin problem. The solution to the sin problem is sitting on the right hand of the Father. Not many wise believe, they are too impressed with their own human wisdom. Not many believed when Paul had recently preached in Athens but mocked him, Acts 17 verse 32. But unto them which are called, the members of the body of Christ that heard the message and believe it, both Jews and Greeks, Gal. 328, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Men with their wisdom could not find God, but God can reach them by the preaching of the truth of his word, Rom 116, 1017, 2. COR 520, 2 Thess 214, the father wagered everything on his son's ability to go through with his plan of redemption. His son did not disappoint him. He saved two groups of believers by one cross. His plan to save all mankind was not revealed until it was revealed to us by Paul, 1 Cor. 2 colon 6 8, 1 Tim. 2 colon 6, God is wise to save men in this way. What God says and does is so far superior to men, no man can ever come close to him. Christ was in full control on the cross, John 19 verse 30, dot. 26 For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called, 27 But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, 28 And base things of the world, and things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence. Look around you and notice that the ones that are saved are the ones that listened to what God said and believed, not the ones who were impressed with how wise and noble they are. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world, preaching, to confound, confuse, the mighty, Satan and his cohorts that are in the second heaven and those inspired by them and damage their plot. Satan bragged in ISA. 14 colon 12 14. Satan thought he could be as wise as God and usurp his throne, but God destroyed his wisdom. God has chosen to use the weak things of the world, ordinary mortal believers made from dirt, to confound the mighty. F. 6 12. Is there life in outer space? Yes, but it is the dastardly devils of darkness. Satan and his fallen angels are in the second heaven. God has chosen the base or lowly believers that are not esteemed by the world to show his power to save. God gave the Gentiles and the Jews over to worship the host of heaven, 1020. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, Acts 7 verse 42. The despised are Paul, his co-workers, and us. Yes, 
God uses the things that are not mighty to bring to nothing the things that are mighty, Satan and his minions. Jesus Christ said that the Gentiles were under the power of Satan, and all the lost unsaved people still are, Acts 26 verse 18, f. 2 colon 2, God uses the foolishness of preaching to save souls, which confounds the wise. Ordinary people who believe his word rightly divided confuse the wise of the world and are approved of God, 2 Tim. 2.15, no one can be prideful and boast in heaven because salvation is by faith alone in what Christ alone. Accomplished Calvary. Paul wants them to glory in the Lord Jesus Christ alone, who is worthy of all praise, and not men. 30 But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, 31 That, according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Paul quotes Jeremiah 9 verses 23 and 24. The Corinthians were exalting men, so Paul exalted the Lord. After saying that God uses the things that are nothing so that no flesh could glory in his presence, he says we believers are made of God to have his wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Why is redemption last? Redemption is last because it is the redemption of our body, Rom. 8.23, at the rapture. With his mind in us, we have wisdom. We have his righteousness. We are sanctified or set apart for his service. Everything is freely given to us in Christ Jesus, and apart from him we have nothing and we are nothing. Therefore, if anyone wants to glory, let him glory in the Lord, Gal. 6.14, and not in men. Do not let the wisdom of this world impress you, get into his word, read and study the Bible so you can grow spiritually. The Father wants everyone to be impressed with his Son, and not in themselves. As his soldiers we proclaim his heavenly ministry, no spirit of fear, 2 Tim, 1 colon 7. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 22 to 25. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Onward Christian Soldiers Sabine Baringold, 1834-1924 One onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before, Christ, the royal master, leads against the foe, forward into battle, see his banner go, refrain, refrain, onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before, Two at the sign of triumph. Satan's host doth flee. On, then, Christian soldiers. On to victory. Hell's foundations quiver. At the shout of praise. 47799, 9.00. Brothers, lift your voices. Loud your anthems raise. Refrain. Three like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading, where the saints have trod, we are not divided. All one body we, one in hope and doctrine, one in charity, refrain. For onward, then, ye people, join our happy throng, blend with ours your voices in the triumph song, glory, laud, and honor. Unto Christ the King, this through countless ages, men and angels sing, refrain, timeline, the Bible is laid out prophecy, mystery prophecy. Prophecy, Genesis to Acts 9, mystery, Romans to Philemon, prophecy, Hebrews to Revelation, do not let anyone close the chart on you. D. B. R. God in the flesh, birth of Jesus Christ, a circumcised Jew, circumcision, uncircumcision, Gen Mal, fall, of Israel Acts 7, Diminishing, Matt John, Acts 2 to 7. Nation of Israel Doctrine Only, Paul. Body of Christ, Grace. BOC to Heaven, 
believe 1 COR 15 colon 1 4 plus nothing. Acts 9. Paul commissioned by God once and for all. Rom Philosophy Bach Doctrine. E. Christ to Earth. Seven years, Trib 1000 years. Reign of Christ on Earth. Hebrews to Rev Tribulation Doctrine. God's will and twofold plan to reconcile both heaven and earth. Chapter 2 After the Cross, God Revealed His Hidden Mystery. 2 colon 1 16, God's Spirit, Mind, Wisdom, and Power Must Work Through Us. What Was the Mystery? 2 colon 6. Who Are the Princes of This World? 2 colon 6 8. How Does His Spirit Communicate His Word to Us? Who are spiritual? 215, 2 colon 1 5 and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. 2 For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ, and him crucified. 3 And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul said I did not come with excellency of speech. He probably spoke common Greek, not fancy Greek. Paul's declared the testimony of God. 15 1 4. He determined to preach what Christ had done on the cross simply without the use of enticing, persuasive words of man's wisdom. The power of the Spirit was demonstrated because many in Corinth believed and were saved. Paul founded the church in Corinth on his second apostolic journey and spent nearly two years there, Acts 18 verses 1 to 18. The Corinthian church began in a Jewish synagogue but then moved into the house next door that shared a wall with that synagogue. Paul said that he was their father by whom they were saved in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel, for 15. Paul spoke with authority. The power was in the preaching of the cross, not in the performance of miracles or signs. Although Paul had the signs of an apostle which confirmed that he was speaking for God and that God was working through him, the preaching of the cross had the power to save 1 Cor. 421, 2 Cor. 1212. Paul's focus was Christ and him crucified and he did not waste any time talking about anything else. The Corinthians' faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth. Rom. 116. Paul knew the gospel of Christ worked. Faith in Christ's crosswork has the power to save a sinner and translate him out of Adam into Christ. Colossians 1 verse 13. Paul allowed the power of Christ to work, speak, and live through him. Paul arrived in Corinth after a seeming defeat in Athens where he made only a few converts, Acts 17 verses 32 to 34. He humbly shared all that Christ had revealed to him. He probably told them the testimony of his salvation. He was with them in weakness and his fear was that they would not believe, and he trembled at the thought of them not going to heaven and that he may fail the Lord Jesus in planting a church that could take root and grow and spread in such a strategic location. Christ entrusted him with the mystery and to be the master builder of this new body of believers destined for heaven, 310. He took his commission very seriously and zealously did his very best for Christ. In the process, Paul revealed God's plan to save two groups, f. 1 colon 9, 10, dot. 6 Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. 7 But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. 8 Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Paul speaks wisdom among them that are perfect, just, spiritual 1437, yet not the wisdom of this world, human, nor the wisdom of the princes of this world that come to naught, nothing. The princes of this world are Satan and his fallen angels and worldly men who are empowered by them, PSA. 2 colon 1 dash 3, Matt. 1112, Luke 19 14, 2014, 15, F. 2 colon 2, 612. 
But we, Paul and Apollos and us, speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom that Christ revealed through Paul. God kept the dispensation in which he is saving another group of people, the body of Christ, to live in heaven, a mystery. A mystery is the hidden wisdom of God that no one can know until God decides to reveal it. God ordained this secret before he made the world to our, the body of Christ's, glory, f. 1 colon 4 12. None of the princes of the world knew about the mystery, because if Satan and his followers had known that they would lose both heaven and earth, then they would not have allowed the Lord of glory to be crucified. This wisdom was ordained or determined by God. Before the world unto our glory. Before he made the world, God decided to save a group of people to live in heaven. God hid the fact of his twofold eternal purpose to reclaim both heaven, using the body of Christ, and earth, using the nation of Israel, from Satan and his cohorts. Most Christians are ignorant of the dispensation of grace outlined in Ephesians chapters 2 and 3. Because of their ignorance of Paul's distinct apostleship to the Gentiles, many pastors are unknowingly trying to bring in the kingdom instead of preparing the believers to reign with Christ in heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ redeemed both the believers in heaven, mystery, and on earth, prophecy. God's glory plan is to glorify his Son in both realms. The princes of the world were empowered by Satan and his cohorts, the principality's powers. The rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, f. 612, to crucify Christ, PSA, 2 colon 1 3. Satan did not know about the hidden wisdom of God since it was not made known in scripture until Paul, f. 3 colon 1 9, when Satan could not resist crucifying the Son of God to death, Satan sealed his own doom. It was checkmate on the cross, Jesus Christ triumphed over Satan, Colossians 2 verse 15, he took back souls in heaven and on earth. The cross allowed the Father to impute the righteousness of Jesus Christ to the person that believes what God said in time past and those who believe in the present, Rom. 3 colon 22 26. Today's gospel is clearly stated in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4. This is how Christ bound the strong man, Satan, and delivered the people in bondage to him, Matt. 12 29. In the future, the strong man will be literally bound by a chain for a thousand years, Revelation 20 verse 3, dot. 9 But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 10 But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. 11 For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. 12 Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 13 Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which? The Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 14 But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Whenever Paul says it is written, he quotes from the Old Testament. Notice that Isaiah says waiteth for him, ISA. 64 colon 4, while Paul, by the Holy Spirit, says love him. Paul applies this verse to the body of Christ, while the little flock, Luke 12 verse 32, the believing remnant of Israel, Peter's group, is still waiting to be born again at Christ's second coming, John 3 verses 3 and 7. This is when they will be resurrected and receive their glorified bodies. But we will have our glorified bodies at the rapture, 614. God can give his son's spirit to two groups. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us, Rom. 5 colon 5, we have been quickened, made alive, with him, F. 2 colon 1, we no longer have the spirit of this world, F. 2 12, which is the spirit of the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, F. 
2 colon 2 no man has ever seen nor heard neither did it come into his heart 2 colon 9 but god hath revealed the things that he has prepared for those who love him his formerly hidden mystery to us through paul by his spirit god is forming the body of christ during the dispensation of grace so those who love him can live in the heavenly places by his spirit we understand god's hidden wisdom the mystery which he kept secret from satan 2 colon 6-8 for his spirit in us searches all things, yeah, the deep things of God. God has manifested, revealed, his hidden mystery, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. Rom. 1625-26a. The hidden wisdom of God was a mystery or secret that was not mentioned in the Bible until Christ revealed it to Paul. God defeated Satan by the cross and by keeping a secret, f. 3 5, 9, Colossians 2 verse 15, Heb. 2 14, before Paul, no one in the Bible said they wanted to live in heaven. This wonderful plan to redeem the body of Christ had not entered into man's heart. God has revealed the mystery to form the body of Christ to us by his spirit. His plan for us is to live with Christ for eternity and he is in us now. It is too late for Satan, he has already lost both heaven and earth, even though Christ has not taken possession of them yet. Just as only the spirit in a man knows the things of man, likewise no man knows the things of God, but by the spirit of God. Now we have received. Not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. What are, what are the things that are freely given to us? 2.12. The things mentioned in 1.30, and much more, f. 1.3. God freely gives us his spirit so we can understand his word and have eternal life in our heavenly home. We do not speak this according to what human wisdom teaches, but by what the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing God's spiritual words with God's other spiritual words in the Bible. Paul had a profound sweeping understanding of the scriptures and often found parallels between Israel's program and ours, and so can we. But the natural man, unsaved, cannot receive the things God says, because they are foolishness to him, neither can he know them. The Bible is a closed book to anyone who is not saved. The unsaved man cannot understand what the Bible says because the Spirit of God is needed to understand His Word. Job 32 verse 8 By His Spirit the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. F. 118 Not by man. God's spiritual words are to be compared in one place with related words found in another place to gain the most profit out of them, cross-referenced, such as Paul's quote of 64 colon 4 and 2 colon 9, dot. 15 But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. 16 For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. But the saved can understand all things we preach. The all things we judge is everything God said in the Bible rightly divided. The spiritual person can judge or examine the truth of what God says, yet he is not judged by another man. God instructs us, we do not instruct him. God alone judges the believer. God's mind is so far superior to man's, but because we have his spirit, we have the mind of Christ now. Adam in Eden was created in God's image and thought like him. So when he named the animals, that is exactly what God would have named them. How do we have the mind of Christ? Since we have the spirit of Jesus Christ, we have his mind, the new man. We feed our new man by reading and studying his word rightly divided. But the spiritual man is not judged by another man. God will judge him at the judgment seat of Christ. God wants us to think like him and is conforming us to Christ. Rom. 829, 12,1, 1, 2, Philosophy. 2 colon 5, we need daily indoctrination and brainwashing. Christ's Spirit instructs us as we study our doctrine and the rest of the Bible. Rightly divided. Our doctrine trains us to think like Christ. Our thinking determines our actions. This is how we walk or live by faith in the words Christ has given us. A spiritual person is one which understands Paul's distinctive ministry, 1437.